Welcome back to High School Sports Extra presented by Nicolay National Bank. He puts the full court press on all of his prep sports coverage. Joining me now to talk about the tip off of the winter sports season and of course to put a bow on the fall season as well is our good friend Ricardo Arguello of the Post Crescent and the USA Today Network. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm just trying to avoid any of the slippery conditions that are out there right now. That's so. right. Yeah, right. everybody be safe out there. Now, uh, Thanksgiving's in the rear view. Yes. Christmas is up ahead. Yes. Which brings to mind, before we get into anything, what's Ricardo's favorite holiday? <laughs> and what's the most overrated it's, holiday? Too? First off, the most overrated holiday, clearly to me, is Fourth of July. In okay. terms, not, not so much for what it stands for, but in terms of all the goofiness that goes on and people blowing up their hands and things yeah, like this. Sure. I, I'm always I'm always fearful to read those kind of news stories. My favorite, easily Christmas. It's, it's, I'm very, I, you know, I'm very, I, have, I, have, I have good cheer. You know, I'm very, I like to think that I'm quite jolly. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Christmas, definitely Christmas. Hard to disagree with you there. <laughs> if anybody cares, I'm with you on Christmas. <laughs> and my least favorite is New Year's Eve. Okay, there you go. Okay. I always call it like the letdown holiday. Oh, New is Year's that right? Bad, bad memories? Is that what it is? Or? I'm not going to talk about Okay, it. all right. All right, well, uh, you know, we're going to jump into some hoops topics, but we haven't talked since the state football championships. Right. So let's dive into that first. Uh, we, you know, Kimberly's streak, five straight championships. Everybody knows it by now, snapped by Muskego. Now, your thoughts on that outcome? You were there with me in the cold uh, as we watched that amazing, amazing run come to an end, which, you know, it may have not ended in a goal ball, but their run isn't over, I don't think. Oh, absolutely not. And uh, Kimberly will be there next year. Now, I, I've said this on my podcast and on, on, on other uh, avenues as well, that this, this Kimberly team, what, only had, uh, they lost 18 uh, letter winners from last year, starters, I should say. Yeah. So they weren't really even expected to be here in many ways. But, you know, we, we say that every year with Kimberly, which is kind of rebuild and everything. Mm -hmm. But it, in my opinion, this was a generational Muskego team. This was one of those teams that come along once every 20 years. Kimberly will be back. Their, their program is too good. They have so much talent among the youth level and the coaching. And in my opinion, they have the pillars that you want in a great program. They have a coaching staff that cares about the players, intertwined with the community. They ain't going anywhere, Ryan. They're going to be there next year. Don't be surprised if they're there at the state final again for what the seventh consecutive time that's right I mean, it was jarring to see them make any mistakes a team that right, never yeah. makes mistakes on the big stage made a few but you know at the end of the day if their season is more remembered for that huge two-point conversion call against final lack in the right. semifinal that's a pretty good year as well that was pretty awesome yeah it was you know a lot of teams a lot of teams would would love to trade places with with you know, with kimberly even with getting the silver ball so you always got to look at the big picture in that way right absolutely let's talk some hoops now the graduation of some generational type players like you were talking about in the football field has left the FBA kind of as wide open as ever, maybe outside of the top spot. Now, Tuesday night, we both took in that Appleton West Kimberly Boys contest. You were calling the game and uh, live streaming it on the Post Crest. Now, behind uh, Levi Ninehouse Borcher, the makers win it 92 86. But these two teams are, they're going to be near the top all year. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there were some folks who maybe thought maybe Appleton West was a lower half team. No way. This team has way too much offense in terms of versatility and what those guys can do. Will Mahoney's one of the best point guards in the area. He dropped 30 uh, on Kimberly. They're going to be just fine. And Kimberly, and I know Coach Lucky Wurtz likes to kind of maybe temper it a little bit in terms of what his expectations were, but when you have a guy like Levi uh, Borchert who's making those kind of 26-point, 18-rebound <laughs> kind of, those are just incredible. Those are those are Giannis kind of numbers that he's putting up there, uh, and he's been there what, seemingly forever too. So he's got that kind of uh, ability, and he's also got, in my opinion, the, the right mental makeup because uh, a lot's going to be expected of him. And, and they have, you know, the... Yeah, they have, they have the, 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 the transfer that came in, and they also have a talented roster as well. So they have, they have everything, in my opinion, to contend for that FEA title. One thing I noticed, Levi kind of looks like Blake Griffin's younger brother. <laughs> Doesn't he? Look at him. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the Kakana now. The reigning Division II state champs, they're moving on without Jordan McKay, one of the best players we've ever had the opportunity to cover in this area. The Ghosts, well, they put up 94 on Fondy, yeah. and, well, last night they eventually pulled away from Alpton North, but that was a tight one for a while. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the 94 points. What can you say about Kakana? You, you, <laughs> You think they're going to take a little bit of a dip, and I had uh, uh, the Ivory Kid on the, the roundtable show just this past week, and uh, very confident guys. I mean, they really think that, uh, yes, okay, they lost Jordan McCabe's over there doing this thing for West Virginia, but they feel they can contend. They, they, they don't want to hear anything about people counting them out, and uh, they're going to be right there, in my opinion, at the end, Kimberly and Karkana, because, you know, the, the Ferris kid, and, and then, like I said, Ivory, and they, they, have, they have a lot of good parts there, and Coach Shallow, you can't, it's hard for me to think of a guy better in terms of game preparation and things like that so they have a they have a great coach they have talented players no they don't have that you know superstar division one player but they have a lot of pieces that could really do a lot of damage come postseason time absolutely to the girls side now you know I don't know how much stock you put into early rankings but I found it kind of curious both Appleton East and Appleton West were ranked in the top 10 by the coaches poll in division one yet the two-time defending state champs from Appleton North were not on the list 
Well, anyway, I know they lost a lot of players, but still plenty of talent left there. I know we saw Paige Chabot in the boot. She's going to be out for a little bit, we think. Yeah. But, man, Appleton North still got to be the team to beat, right? You got to beat them first. Well, let me tell you something. I don't think they, I don't think they really, they don't mind not being okay. the favorites. Over. They like being, everyone just kind of forgetting about them. Oh, they're the two-time defending state champs. Yes, they lot of, lost a lot of impact players. New head coach. New head coach. Uh, but they're just kind of, okay, don't think about us. Don't worry about us. But they're going to be there at the end, uh, Ryan. When I saw this team, they have, they have Van Handel. I mean, they have uh, Van Wyk. They have, they, have, they have pieces here that have played in some big games. And you saw it there actually against Kakana. Kakana stuck with them for a little bit. and uh, But then that experience kind of pulled away. They're going to be just fine. I, I was just as shocked as you were, Ryan, <laughs> when I saw that as well. I think that, you know, the early season polls kind of a, you know, I don't want to say they're a throwaway, but they're kind of tough to, to kind of measure, especially Come January, I think you'll get a better idea of who's where. We've seen a lot of video of Kimberly and Hortonville. Where do they stack up? Well, you know, Kimberly, in, I, in my opinion, Kimberly might be seen as the favorite in the FBA along okay. with Appleton North. Uh, as for Hortonville, hey, they got the Macy McGlone girl. Remember, they took, uh, in my opinion, I thought they gave uh, Beaver Dam a pretty yeah. good game last year for a while. She's as talented as any player in our area. Uh, she was actually in recently for our Fab Five uh, video and photo shoot. Uh, and she's a player. She, she, she is a sizable player. She is someone who's going to dominate the league for the next couple of years because, you know, she's young. I mean, she still has a couple of seasons left. And Hortonville, yes, they, they did lose uh, some key components, but I, I think they're going to be right there at the end, to tell you the truth. Yeah, and McGlone, I mean, she made a name for herself at the rest Center yeah, last year. Wow. And finally, in the NEC, the Northeastern on the girls' side, all eyes will be on Wrightstown and Freedom. Not only some great individual players, but a great team. They really gel together. Both of those teams, along with Luxembourg Casco, speaking of great athletes, right. they have a couple too, <laughs> yes. and they're two and zero in league play. All three of those teams are going to be a yeah. And there's star power there. I mean, obviously Luxembourg Casco with the Schultz, Schultz girl, and then mm -hmm. you know Wrightstown has the Denny girls, and also a Froki. Uh, you know, and Freedom also has some Genki and some talented players there. Hazi as well. This is going to be a great race to watch. Might be the most entertaining in our area. I know in our area it is for sure. So uh, and again. We're going to see some early season matchups and who's going to, maybe some of these early season matchups are going to kind of show you what's going to go on the rest of the season. But in my opinion, I think Wrightstown, and, and please, Freedom, don't, don't be upset with me. Or maybe Electra McCarthy. Light think, the fire. Light I the think, fire. I think Wrightstown, in my opinion, has, has all the tools again to make another run to the state, uh, state tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, they're, they, they should finish at the top in, in the NEC. Not to take anything away from the, you know, the Spartans and the Irish, but yeah. And quickly, what should people be looking out for in the post press and coming up here? Yeah, well, our Fab Five boys and girls. Girls, uh, photo video shoot was done this past week, uh, and I think that's going to be expected very soon. Uh, you know, Jim Rosendick will put that together uh, for us as well. Oh, we also have our live streams every week, our Game of the Week. I do that with Brett Christofferson as well as Jim Rosendick. And every week we have a Game of the Week. Best place to find out is Facebook.com slash, uh, um, I should say, Facebook.com slash Post Crescent. You'll be able to find all that information. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lots all of right. great information as always. All right, when we come back on High School Sports, extra time to bring it home with the Local 5 Top 5 Plays, Team of the Week, and more. So keep it here.